All right. Whew. Scary. Scary stuff. Hello, and welcome, everybody, to tonight's absolutely fantastic, lovely dinosaur action. The night before, one night before, this time tomorrow, you're going to be seeing me opening up packs of Thunder Junction on Arena. We're going to be getting Vaultborn Tyrant, and I won't be looking back. Well, sometimes look back, that is what brings me to tonight's change if it's going to stick around the night before outlaws of thunder junction i'm adding in I'm back in marauding raptor i didn't feel quite right i talked about it briefly last night but we'll get into it exactly why and why maybe now is the right time to add in those early creatures it didn't feel quite right early on with this variation and the tweaking of things but for perhaps perhaps it is at the right moment well it's certainly going to help out rotting and hunt master with that cost reduction extra ways to play the bigger stuff which normally still without these isn't much of a problem but it's just going to lead to better aggression of course these things often die which is part of the reason why i trimmed them many months ago focusing on lands to get there. I don't have to worry about all of the opponent's removal. It was nice. It is nice. But I thought, I'm just going to go all in. And sometimes that makes sense for you know, quite a few decks. You go all in, you just add in all the best stuff to achieve whatever your game plan is. The best it possibly can be. And perhaps it looks something like this. Maybe, maybe just maybe I don't need Sylvan Scrying with seems pretty crazy this stampede dinos list focusing on assembling specific lands to make a bunch but perhaps sylvan scrying could be switched out for another big dinosaur of course urshik or dead mod the last night i may ever be using it uh, possibly i'll jam it in along with the vault born tyrant but uh yeah yeah this might be the last night of course i'm happy to try things out and that is lovely thing some nights i'll just jam something in just because there doesn't have to be a particular reason i like to provide at least some reason of why i made a change but other times just dust it off scratch an itch try an idea mine or some of your guys you may be trying some different stuff with this particular list and uh it's nice to hear your ideas oh <laughs> However, everything is basically the same. Marauding Raptor was Pugnacious Hammer Skull last night. I say we jump right into it. Yeah, yeah. Without further ado, try and get through as many matches as possible. There is 19 lands. I took that fantastic suggestion and bumped it up just a touch. 20, 21, 22, I have to say, I do get flooded quite a bit. When I was using 22, it happened again and again and again it's painful stuff all of a sudden you're making seven mana eight mana and then you draw land you absolutely don't need it because oftentimes you're playing one big thing in a turn it might be carnage turned you might have potentially a little bit of mana left over but no other small things to play so that's where otepic huntmaster or marauding raptor could come in quite nicely Two Sunken Citadels, providing the four mana needed for Castle Garenbrig. Then two other lands, five in total. But two Sunkens and Castle pays for Carnage Tarrant. Then that two extra for Otepic Huntmaster or Marauding, but usually I would play them first. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully it's Azorius Control. That would be nice to face them in back-to-back -back nights. I think that could be the case. We've got the lovely Wanderer, Emperor, the Avatar, Yorion. Huh. I think this definitely is it. Do I want to keep it? Nothing for a two, which is pretty crazy stuff. I have 12 creatures for two. Not creatures, 12 spells. Sylvan Scrying, Hunt Master, and Marauding. Uh, one mulligan. Okay, okay. Now, I think that got quite a bit better. But, of course, if it is counter spells like I suspect. 
You know what? I'm going to send Cavern of Souls to the bottom. I have two. That should be good. Commercial district to start. Cavern coming up. Sunken Citadel. I want to choose green. It's not going to be providing the red needed for Marauding on turn two. I don't have to play Marauding on turn two because... Well, it's not going to be accelerating out much of anything on turn three. Sunken Citadel? Does that make sense? Do I want to see what's coming up on top? Let's see it. Oh, a hunt master. So now things get interesting. On turn three, I can go hunt master for two and marauding for one. Although, what is up this opponent's sleeve? It's getting a little bit scary, I must admit. Hmm. Hmm. Let me think. Nah, we got to get sunken down. Start with hunt master. Lovely stuff. I could have played Marauding, but if I had played Marauding, what would have happened? Huntmaster would have been locked out, would have been dead. I do imagine Huntmaster is going to go down to Yorion, Enchantments, something like that. Five Color Fires of Invention. Get that Leyline Binding coming in hot. I believe they have enough to cast it for two. Ah. Oh, Vanishing Verse. Well, that's not too bad. I can live with that. Hopefully commercial district. That could be good. Earthshaker Dreadmaw, we can't play it next turn. I would imagine they do have some removal for Marauding Raptor. We would be able to play it with that Cavern of Souls. Uh, you know what? I'm going to send it to the bottom. I want to increase the chances of possibly seeing Carnage Tyrant instead of Earthshaker. But also just seeing Castle Garenbreak. Either I draw it. I draw Sylvan Scrying to grab it, or I draw Arcdruid's Charm to grab it. And there we go. That should pack a punch. Oh, well, that's uh, a little bit rough. Well, at the very least, to uh, get a little bit of aggression in. Uh, eventually, eventually, we'll get one of 12 things. The castle itself, or one of those eight things that specifically grabs it. It's got to be coming up. 100%. I am staying very very positive with a hand like that how could you not okay well phew. oh my goodness if they may have just goofed up because uh yeah surprise if they had removal something to deal with marauding raptor they're kicking themselves because it was left alive it allowed me to play that tranix rex and now what are they gonna do leyline binding basically taking their entire turn off Spending a total of five. One to cast Leyline Binding and then four for the ward. That's all I can see. Maybe. Hmm. If we draw a land that enters untapped next turn, I can still straight up play. Okay, that's not gonna do it. Huh. Yeah, they, they die. They have one treasure left. What are you gonna do with two? Not a whole lot good stuff ouch there you go what a way to start boom you have no power here okay well that was a fantastic example if marauding raptor was basically anything else i wouldn't have continually been able to cast the Tyrannix Rex. It could have been a creature that makes a treasure. Prosperous Innkeeper is a very real possibility. But that would have only helped once to cast one of them. Being able to follow up again and again and again. I love it. However, this is... Well, pick your poison. Five-colored Niv-Mizzet Reborn. That guy's rough. Do I care about it? Well, it seems like they don't have a whole lot of interaction. I should be able to do my thing. However, we got to be worried about Dovin's Veto there. Seeing it in the graveyard. Countering potentially the early ramping spells. They can't counter Marauding or Huntmaster. Those are creatures. So we should be safe in that regard. I say I keep it as is. It's probably, well, they might have thought seize, perhaps. Something like that. But I'm not overly worried. We should have a decent chance. Oh, a, a pretty much perfect chance. Perfect hand. I'll take it. Excuse me. 
And that sheltered thicket, that could have been the extra land, possibly the 19th land. Because it was 18 last night, I added in another sheltered thicket, I think I have two. We'll never know if I had one sheltered thicket as the 19th land, that would have... Well, there you go. We do need a forest though, very important to have a healthy number of forests, helping Castle Garenbrake to enter untapped. However, our land for the turn is going to be the second sunken, and then next turn, turn four, we're able to make seven for the lovely Tyrannix Rex. And uh, wow, there you go. Or turn four, Vaultborn Tyrant. Whatever makes the most sense, I think at this point it might be Tyrannix Rex. Keep up that aggression as good as possible. I don't think it's going to be transmogrified, but uh, maybe it is. I guess it could. Okay, maybe not. We'll get him. We'll get him. Smoke him, hopefully. Cross your fingers. Surprise. P pretty good. Oh, boy. Watch him mouse over all the lands. They can't figure out how is that possible. Glitching. Or hacking. Ooh, scary stuff. I want to press something different. What? What in the hell just happened? How did he do that? That actually is pretty much perfect because the opponent literally is thinking, how did that happen? What the heck just happened? What is being dealt to me? How can I stop that? It's going to be pretty hard when it happens on turn four. Cut between a rock and a hard place. Ooh, to fairy. Good stuff. And they'll be able to cast the tracks. I imagine they're going to do that. She costs a total of seven. Yeah, seven. They have enough mana. And they can spend uh, what they need with the treasures. Making the blue and the black. All we have to do is attack. Molten Collapse, okay. Okay, take off most of your turn. Hopefully we see Galta Stampede Tyrant soon. That would be nice, because it would be mostly dead. Okay, okay, so we can play it. Which is very lovely stuff. However, hmm, I can make a total of eight. I can only cast one thing. What do I want it to be? They don't have any treasures. We don't have to worry about a ley line binding. So I say we just go Polanyi's Hatcher. We know nothing is going to be killed. Polanyi or the Egg. We can get a little bit of aggression in with this. And this could be, if everybody survives, a little bit better. If we do cast Earthshaker Dreadmaw next turn, we're going to be drawing three cards with those three dinosaurs that are out. Something's going down, though. A Sweeper somebody painful reflection of kiki jiki they have two copies so they can start copying each other making a swarm and uh well we'll see what happens if the opponent knows what's up making the copies at the end of the end of my turn so those copies stick around for the start of the opponent's turn and then well, you just die to a, a go wide strategy of reflections try and kill it maybe they have something that can deal one damage or I don't know uh, either they play one big thing or they save the mana to make a bunch of copies huh you know what I kind of like Earthshaker Dreadma. I think we could be safe even though I would expect they're gonna be doing stuff painful stuff okay okay that's that's looking good Huh. Sylvan's Crying? I say we go with Sylvan's Crying. We can't go Arc to its Charm, unfortunately. Cavern of Souls we could have played, but it can't have provided a source of green for Arc to it. So it might as well be that commercial district. See if Galta is on top. You can know oh, that's not Galta. And we don't need that land whatsoever. Okay, Galta. Coming up. Gotta be. Gotta be. We're almost a third of the way through. My oh my. Yeah, 
Smack him with that. Smack him with everything. They're at nine, huh? I think they have something at instant speed, but we're about to find out. Make them make all the tokens now, so then they're not going to be making much of anything at the end. They do have to have enough to save themselves and block, but I'm okay with this. Everybody being thrown at the Earthshaker, but then if they are, they would still die. Huh. Caught between a rock and a hard place. In that case, though, Earthshaker Dreadma was a little bit better than Voltborn Tyrant. It entered, we drew three cards where the Voltborn would have just drawn one card from itself. It'll be interesting. I bet I'm going to try using Earthshaker plus Voltborn Tyrant Supercharge the card draw. That'd be pretty good. It might be overkill in some cases, but hey, they're dead. Good luck. Niv Mizzet is a card, a big, a big flying creature that I don't care too much about. Whew. Okay, yeah, devastated. It's a trap. All right, let's just do it again. Hopefully, Marauding Raptor continues to perform. I don't see why it wouldn't, but it's nice that it did a thing so early on. The thumbnail sake. Very, very scary stuff. Whew. But yeah, since you're not doing anything super duper aggressive early on, if you have just Marauding to start, you can afford to wait a turn or two, see if you draw that Hunt Master, and then you can safely go with that. Or possibly hunt master on turn three with three untapped lands and then use the third land to play marauding for a single red because it's reduced by hunt master so you chain them a bit you just increase the chances of seeing that hunt master first and making it not dead because with marauding pinging hunt master for two killing it not a fun time no no if you had a bunch of dinos that cost three or four much lower than this i could see probably wanting marauding you want that cost reduction as early as possible but with this there's a little little window of time that you could wait that hand though 100 percent keep it sunken and castle even though i don't have a source of red sunken could have been a source of red but it has to be green for castle sylvan scrying gonna grab a second, okay, we've got Boros Lock. That could be painful. Painful for the opponent. Well, we're about to find out. They may be mostly dead. They will be trying to stop us from playing cards at all. We can only play cards from our hand, but they exile everything. They're going to be exiling Galta's Stampede Tyrant with the Elite Spellbinder. Draineth Magistrate makes it so the card that Spellbinder exiles, we can never play, even if we have enough to pay the tax, an extra two. It's pretty interesting and a, a pretty painful deck. But we have lots of lovely top decks, basically every creature in the deck is big and scary and painful. And again, once again, I will be able to make seven on turn four. Oh, it might have been a goof on their part i would have done go to stampede Hi uh, tyrant Ty oh boy oh boy good stuff sylvan to grab a land for the turn it's got to be a land that enters untapped stomping ground because i still want to play hunt master and then we go with galta next turn it doesn't matter if hunt master is killed removed exiled we will be able to make eight but uh, i might as well do that if Huntmaster survives, it could give haste to Galta, hopefully. I'm pretty certain they have something up their sleeve, though. Anointed Peacekeeper to get rid of Galta's Stampede Tarrant. Without question, that is gone. Hopefully I draw another copy. Okay, okay, that's painful. I, I don't need Sylvan Scrying, so as you're seeing, so incredibly, incredibly flooded. But we'll play Nurturing Bristleback, uh, you know, get some bodies down. Pretty nice. Force them to block somebody at some point here. Uh, start chipping away at the very least. 
Oh boy. Hopefully we can get the job done. Okay, marauding is quite nice. And we're able to play Galta, so we're playing Galta. Oh, that is crazy. Huntmaster reducing Galta to 8 because, well, it was taxed to 10. I like it. I like it. Will they bounce somebody, kill somebody? Do they have settled the wreckage? That's a very real possibility. But I say we just go all in. Ruthless aggression and we see. Okay. Okay. We learned they have the Wandering Emperor. We gain that bit of information. But I don't see them killing us next turn with their creatures. And I would like to uh, potentially kill some of their stuff. Hopefully. Yeah. But yeah, Huntmaster there performing quite nicely hopefully seeing something big oh that's that's not good and that is uh that is going to be it urabrask any card we draw uh, card for the turn is exiled and we can play it that turn but we can't play it because draineth magistrate sadly is locking us out okay okay well, nurturing bristle back. Uh, we'll smack him, attack him. Somebody has to block it. I'm pretty sure. Good. Anointed peacekeeper, which means Pliny's hatchet can now be played. I think can can't. Okay, it can't. Never mind. But we'll still keep up the aggression. Maybe we can squeak out a win. Okay, okay. That tends to do the trick. The darn Boros Draineth Magistrate Lock. Do I have anything specifically against it that would help? Draineth Magistrate has to die on sight without question. If that was gone, we would be in a much better position. Draineth Magistrate is pub public enemy number one. Brotherhood's End. It's got to be. Big time. Huntmaster. Yeah. Maybe. Trim it. Trim one of those things. Both Huntmaster and Marauding die to Brotherhood's End 3 damage. Sadly. Is there anything else I want to take out? Elite Spellbinder could be a thing. As long as that card remains exiled, its owner may pay to... Uh... Okay. So it's not like the card becomes unexiled. Ah, I see. Yeah. It's got to be Brotherhood's End. Okay, okay. Strap yourselves in. Cross your claws or whatever it is. We'll get them. Hopefully. Yep, I'm keeping that. 100%. We got the Brotherhoods, a bunch of nice lands. Starting off with a commercial district and possibly Sunken Citadel choosing red. Just so we can get the two sources for Brotherhoods. We don't need an Earthshaker Dreadmaw. We already got one in hand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brotherhood's End is going to smoke you. Out of the water. Watch him play it next turn and watch it die. Do it. Do it. Oh, you got two. Play it. Oh, interesting. They don't. Ready and waiting, seeing uh, what's going to happen. I'm going to go both marauding. I would imagine the opponent has removal for one. If I play both, well, that increases the chances of one coming down. And now maybe they'll play the Draineth Magistrate. Hopefully. I think they may want to deal with Marauding Raptor, but okay. Uh, soul Partition, rough stuff. Pretty good. Commercial District. Might as well... I want to be playing Marauding Raptor. Yeah. Just get it down. Play it. And hopefully they run out of annoying removal. Where's that Draineth Magistrate? Invasion of Gobacon. Maybe that is going to be choosing Brotherhood's End. I could see that being a very real possibility. But I can play Regis Rao for next turn. And that is just going to be absolutely scary. And, uh... Ruthless aggression. Oh! Very, very ruthless aggression. Yeah, well, that's uh, 
definitely understand. Oh, you, yeah, you did that. Oh, oh boy. Well, 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 look what I just drew. Now I could smoke him this turn. I'm not gonna do that. I want good aggression. I wanna beat him up. Each creature attacking is at least three power, so Draineth Magistrate is not blocking either at all, whatsoever. Oh, it is. Okay, good, good. Hopefully they don't have another one, but if they do play it, I know what I'm doing. It dies. Oh, oh shucks. Oh, you didn't do your thing. I'm just happy I didn't need it, but uh, Brotherhood's End is definitely, definitely staying in. Yeah. All right, they know I have a sweeper. They know I could kill it. Will they play around it a little bit? Possibly. I'm still going to hope that I see it in the opening hand. I'm going to hope that I see more lands than zero. Risky. I like seeing Sunken and Castle Garenbig, I gotta say. One more mulligan. Okay, well, that's uh, gonna have to be it. Galta and... Galta and Planes Hatcher, I like that. Hopefully supercharging and getting to Tyrannix Rex. That would be ideal. Marauding Raptor would help to get Tyrannix Rex potentially a little bit easier, earlier. Pliny's Hatcher doesn't help get Tyrannix Rex. Galta doesn't help to get Tyrannix Rex. Okay, okay. That's uh, a wee bit rough. Sylvan's crying 100% grabbing that you-know-what. The first sunken. Hopefully we get Marauding Raptor down next turn. Okay, okay. The real question becomes, what will Elite Spellbinder choose? I do need two sources of red for Brotherhood's End. That's going to be an uphill battle to get. If I draw Brotherhood's End next turn, Sunken Citadel for sure would be chosen as red. We need three green next turn anyways. Arc Druids, that's just how it has to be. We'll grab Commercial District though. We'll go Arc Druids first, see what's on top. Well, Arc Druids first grab Sunken and then Commercial to see what's on top. The second Sunken that I choose is going to be red plus Commercial District for the turn. Will get me the two sources. Okay, well, well we're not going to be sadly playing Arc Druids Charm. The opponent is likely wise to our ways and Arc Druids is gone. Okay, odd. I'll take it. Kind of uh, amusing. Hey, you never know what uh, what they'll do. Red and commercial. Let's go. Kind of like Planes Hatcher. We'll be playing hopefully Regis or Alpha and Planes Marauding. We might be mostly dead, but two Marauding Raptors next turn would be quite ideal. Oh, we can't play it. Never mind. Hmm. I need lots of creatures to block. We're going to go with Polanyi's Hatcher. Yeah. Two creatures on the ground. Polanyi's could trade with the Peacekeeper or the Magistrate, which I don't think they're going to be doing. Hold everybody back. Wait and see. Okay, not too bad. They can only hit us for three with the Spellbinder, which is a lot. It's painful. Oh, they're setting up for the pesky Urabrask. Huh. Hmm, let me think. Sadly, there isn't a way to play Marauding plus Regis or Alpha. That would be ideal. Huh. Let me think. Now you know what? Marauding Raptor it is. Marauding plus Tranix Rex, really. That does make quite a bit of sense. Now is it enough to scare him away? Elite Spellbinder will basically be killing us next turn. Do I want to smack him a bit? Maybe. 
You know what, let's smack him a bit. We could be quite easily dead. Stuff with haste and whatnot. We'll find out. Alright. Four creatures down below, able to block the Magistrate, the Peacekeeper, the Goblin Token, and maybe one other creature that has haste. So perhaps we can get her done. Have some fun. Or they have a stomp, some way to finish us off for that two damage. Sadly. Something. Anything. What's it gonna be? Okay, okay, that's uh well, that does not do it. Let me think, let me think. Yeah, Regis Ralph. Earthshaker, we don't draw cards. Elish Norn. What is the best thing? Regis Ralpha. It enters and it makes a token, but Elish Norn has turned that off, so I'm paying four for a four four. Haste. Or Earthshaker, five for a six six. That that is better. Big time. I don't draw cards, but it's gotta be now or never. Ruthless, maximum aggression. And we'll see. I don't think it's enough, but uh, all that stuff has to block. Raphael, how's it going? Hopefully all is well for you. I, I basically have a new list. Oh, that is painful. So close, so close. Uh, basically, it is this list. Earthshaker Dreadmaw, which you just saw right there. That comes out. The Vaultborn Tyrant comes in, and everything stays pretty much just as it is i might well likely i will sprinkle in and splash for other colors at some point but yeah oh vaultborn tyrant really is the main thing outcaster trailblazer of course i will test that out a little bit i'm mostly excited for the vaultborn tyrant though yeah oh it's gonna pack a punch i'm aiming to open up maybe 40 packs i might do 30 I'm definitely getting the Mastery Pass tomorrow, 100%. But yeah, I should be able to get at least Vaultborn Tyrant. I have four Mythic Rare Wild Cards, so I don't even have to open up any packs. If I wanted to simply redeem them for the Vaultborn Tyrant, I could do that and save all my gold, but I gotta open up you know, 10, 20, 30 something like that I probably want to save about 10 10 or 20 thousand gold just in case there's something really good that comes in the store some of that stuff is pretty expensive gold wise I want to be able to have enough especially if it is a super limited edition sale and sometimes you know oftentimes it's only costing gems but the odd time it's something really neat and it's like 20,000 gold or yeah nocturne how's it going hopefully all is well one in 33 packs huh that's going to be interesting it's going to be nice to roll the dice with all of you guys let's see if i get extra lucky yeah one in 33 though that is that is pretty rough eh. whatever either you open up a thing you want or you get the wild cards and you redeem it Either way, I'm going to be getting my playset, and I'm going to be crushing people. Kind of like this hand could crush them. The first sunken is green, the second is red to have... Well, we weren't... We're not searching for you-know-what, unfortunately. Well, that would have been nice, Sylvan Scrying, if it had stuck around. But we still have Acceleration, you know, Hunt Master Marauding. Maybe those guys will stick around a little bit to help. Hopefully. Maybe I draw a Castle Grandbrig next turn. Start off with Huntmaster, follow up with Marauding, and smoke him. Maybe. It does appear to be a uh, you-know-what. Oh boy, Stomp or Fatal Push. Oh, here comes nothing. Stomp. Interesting. This appears to be maybe regular 
Rakdos mid-range. Oof. That's going to be rough. Fortunately, it wasn't Shieldred. That is uh, much, much appreciated. But getting two Marauding Raptors down, that's not so bad. Lovely to have that Cavernous Souls getting the source of red or green, whatever's needed for a dinosaur. Next turn, I can play Regis or Alpha. That'd be all right. Or Earthshaker Dreadmine. I might try to do that. If both Marauding Raptors are still alive. But I don't think that's going to be happening. One has got to die. They might have another Stomp. Another Bone Crusher Giant in their hand. Which would take out Marauding Raptor. I have to preserve them. If at all possible. Okay. Okay. Vein Ripper is uh, painful stuff. Four, two, uh, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Regis or Alpha would die plus the token. I would lose a total of four, go down to 14, but both Marauding Raptors would threaten that Vein Ripper. It's now or never. That is the only play at the moment, unfortunately. That's what we're doing. Nuts. Pretty cool, though, to see Galtus Stampede Tyrant reduced to six. Maybe this is the way. I would imagine I'm mostly dead, but perhaps through some twist of fate, uh, something works out. I don't think that's going to be the case, but uh, yeah. if I just wait around, I'm definitely dead to you-know-who. At least the Vein Ripper doesn't have life gain, but whenever a creature dies, we lose to... Okay, okay, that uh, does, does tend to do it. Painful. And it will be a little bit painful when I choose red or some other color for that second sunken, uh, keeping me off of Archdruid's charm. It's going to be a little bit awkward, but I definitely want to put this through the paces using Huntmaster and Marauding Raptor. Trim Huntmaster, though, the easiest to kill thing. It's got that two toughness, so it dies to the stomp of Bone Crusher Giant. And bring in Pick Your Poison. If we see Vein Ripper, no. Go away. Hopefully, Duress or Thoughtseize doesn't get rid of it, but, well, Otipic Huntmaster is as good as dead. Well, we would be as good as dead if we kept a hand that only had Commercial District. That's, that's better. Definitely better. Starting off with the District, see what's on top. Hopefully, it's a third source of green to help that arc do its charm. Regis or Alpha, send it packing. Would be nice to keep, but Carnage Tarrant is the most durable thing. If I have to send something to the bottom, it would be Redis or Alpha over Carnage Tarrant. You know what? Send it. We already have one Carnage Tarrant in hand. It is. It is. 100%. You get ahead just forever. Glimpse the core. You grab a forest. You put it on the battlefield, and you don't have to worry about Fatal Push, Get Lost, Fiery Impulse, anything. Anything. It's a little bit slower. It has a lower ceiling, but stability. It's a very, very good thing. Not so good with that Cavern of Souls, but hey, can't always be super perfect. Sylvan Scrying would have been quite ideal in that case. Play Soren. Uh, do your Vein Ripper. Let's go. Okay, well... Uh, they're going to get rid of Arcduid's Charm, I think. Uh, maybe pick your poison. Arcduid's Charm, perhaps they're going to realize that... I can't make the third green. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Thoughtsies, thoughtsies. Okay, well, that's good. At least uh, we're not seeing the Vein Ripper quite yet. Okay, well, that's uh, painful. Might as well keep Pick Your Poison in my hand. Sometimes it hurts. Okay, okay. I like Sunken Citadel, gotta say. If I cast Pick Your Poison, they would just sacrifice the blood token in response, unfortunately, so it would completely go to waste. 
We're waiting. We're seeing. If you know what is going to drop as the opponent drops our life total. Don't exactly need commercial district. That does tend to do it. Nuts. Darn. Hand hate gets me. Which brings me back to Leyline of Sanctity. Oh, I love that. I'm going to love re-adding Leyline of Sanctity in because this stuff is common enough. There is batches and streaks of games where I don't face anything black related. It's not mono black waste, not vampires, that sort of stuff. And I think, oh, I'm safe to remove something that protects me, that gives me a very good chance against the hand hate. Because it can be fragile, as you just saw. They pick the perfect piece and everything falls apart. So giving myself hexproof or whatever way to protect against the hand hate, it becomes pretty important. Not the most necessary because if I keep a hand with a good mixture of lands, you can't duress a land away. You can't thought seize a land away. It is quite nice. If I can turn Sylvan Scrying into a land, turn two, however I have to do it, I do it. You turn a searching spell into something that can't be discarded. Very important. But I like this though. Hopefully it's not uh, another you know what. We'll definitely try to get that Sylvan Scrying off as soon as possible though. Mono white humans. Huh. Go with Castle Garenbrink. We couldn't have played Hunt Master anyways. Gotta search for Sunken Citadel. We have Galta Stampede Tyrant. As long as the humans player isn't too fast. I'd be surprised if they were slow, but okay, maybe, maybe it's not. It's odd. But that sunken will choose red. I would eventually have my two sources of green, two extra sources of green with the commercial district in the forest. So it can get sunken as red to potentially help play Huntmaster. It would help play Huntmaster next turn. Commercial district has to enter tapped and oh boy, this is land on top, land on top. Oh, that's not a land on top. Okay. If it is a land that enters untapped and Huntmaster survives, they will die. We'll be able to play Galta Stampede Tyrant and okay, okay, get lost. Very lovely stuff. I can still play Earthshaker Dreadmaw. It's not the end of the world. It's a little bit rough. You know what? We're going to supercharge it. Marauding. I have those two map tokens. That's going to dig, hopefully seeing a land for the turn. And again, if Marauding survives, boom. Oh, we don't need Tyrannix Rex. Looking for a land. Looking for a land. Uh, technically, Sylvan Scrying is a land. Huh. Nope. I'm, I'm going to do it. Send it to the bottom. Let's go. Okay, so mono white, lay down arms, tokens, mono white aggro that isn't humans. Very interesting stuff. Hmm. A little bit rough. At least we have the Earthshaker Dread mod, though. A nice big creature. Hopefully, they've run out of removal. I'm kind of wishing I kept that Sylvan Scrying, though. Could have been better just in case things went south kind of like they did sylvan scrying just guaranteeing eventually i would get to galta stampede tarrant we will be mostly dead sadly with the smuggler's copter not quite dead next turn oh cavern of souls looking good looking very very good do I want Earthshaker to draw a little bit closer into land? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get that land. Oh, Arcdruids is something. That could take out the Smuggler's Copter, but... I think they have instant speed removal. Somebody's dying. 
Oh, okay. This is positive. They sacrificed the land. They have a little bit less. They're digging for another get lost. Okay, they got it. I think they got it. Pretty sure. Maybe they can power up Smuggler's Copter. One more turn. Here goes nothing. Oh boy. But again, Arc Druid's Charm, if all goes south, take out the copter. I like that. Land on tap. Let's go. Oh boy. Oh boy. There it is. There it is. See you later. Good game. Oh, beautiful. Phew. Oh, 100% eats chocolate. All the Vaultborns. Four Vaultborns all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Got him. Phew. Phew. Yeah, I do, I do miss seeing Vorn Klex for the reach. Man, I love Vorn Klex. That guy's pretty good. Oh, maybe I got... Okay. Maybe I didn't get it. I think that's it. Yeah, oh, that's it. That's it. Okay, okay. Yeah, Vaultborn Tyrant, 100%. All four copies. It's good against everything. It's a natural, perfect fit. Urshik or Dreadmaw, you saw there, didn't gain a whole lot. For a while there, I was stuck on seven mana, so an Urshik or Dreadmaw, or a Vaultborn Tyrant in place of Urshaker would have been infinitely better. Jordan, how's it going? Hopefully all is well with you. All is well with everybody watching right now or later on. But imagine, keep in mind, the opponent uses Get Lost. They destroy Urshaker. Nothing happens. They destroy Voltborn. But then it makes a copy that's also an artifact. I draw a card, gain some life, and... Uh, yeah. A Voltborn Tyrant has to be better in many more cases and many more scenarios than Dreadmaw. A few fringe cases, Dreadmaw is going to be a little better, but yeah, got him. Brotherhood's End seems like a natural fit. Again, a very straightforward trim, a play set of the early creatures. Maybe you want to bring in eight things, more sweepers, trim four hunt masters and tomb rotting to make space if that stuff is gonna die or it was gonna die anyways you might as well not have it in and there you go you got your spots for the sweepers pretty good i'm used to not using those early creatures anyways so it doesn't feel as wrong as it did before i tried this do i want to try this there's no Castle Garenbrig or Sunken Citadel to start, but I do have two sources of green. And one source of red. If this was Cavernous Souls in a forest, I would immediately get rid of it. But being a stomping ground in the forest... Uh, you know what? We're on the draw. Let's... Let's risk it. Could be good. We're gonna be up one more card. Hopefully seeing... Marauding. Marauding or Sylvan Scrying or Land. Either of that. Oh, lovely. Sylvan Scrying, of course, going to grab Sunken Citadel. Oh, Brotherhood's End. Okay. Another one. As DJ Khaled says, I should make a clip of that. If I have Tyrannix Rex and then I just top deck another one, I press that. I think that'd be good. Clip addition. Okay, okay. Sylvan Scrying a land or marauding. Let's go. I'd be a little bit sad if I didn't see one of those things. Reasonable chance. Okay, let's see it. Okay, I got a thing. A thing I was hoping for. Okay, now we need another source of red. Sylvan Scrying or Sunken. Okay. Chances are getting 
a little bit lost but if we get that source of red next turn or the turn after that's gonna be lovely sad that we have to discard the one thing but a sweeper it's gonna turn things around this is not mono white human so definitely have a little bit longer to recover unfortunately Sarah Perga, okay, well, we, we did get it. I do like that. Five, six, seven, okay. Sarah Paragon won't quite kill us. We're gonna try and kill them though. Kind of like Cavern of Souls, I might as well get a land next turn. Hmm. We have any way out of this. Unfortunately, the Sarah Paragon is for toughness. I don't see that happening. No. I don't want to reveal the fact that I have Brotherhood's End. We would have been taken down to. Well, we would have died. Castle Ardenvale, after we swept, they would have made a token 1 1 plus the 3 from the Paragon. That would have been exactly lethal. So, might as well keep the Brotherhood's End surprise in our back pocket bust it out if we need to yeah that yeah, is going to be a little bit awkward i might just discontinue using brotherhood's end because it requires the two red and it makes the early game painful but that hand is not painful absolutely a keeper four lands Ugh. one of them is sunken and i have a sylvan to grab castle gambrick oh big time I want Tyrannix Rex I don't exactly need another land because I'm going to be going with Sylvan Scrung at some point anyways hmm yeah I've got my two red with the other commercial district I don't have to worry about making the red needed for brotherhoods we should be okay demolition field is going to be a little bit rough but just use Sylvan get a castle get it out well not yet they know we're gonna play it and they might be worried about it keep it in hand maybe they take out sunken citadel that's a, a very real possibility but if we don't ever put castle gambrick out until the turn we need it it's protected that's good i can make six green at the moment Tranix rex cost seven i can't play plenty so rotting it is hopefully well it should be safe maybe not this turn but next turn i can make seven. Oh, okay okay hopefully they don't play a plane okay there you go good they goofed up they should have taken out sunken citadel now that uh that caused their doom they're going to die because of that. We draw another land at any point and uh, they're going to be smoked. They're going to have a hard time dealing with that. Whew. What you going to do? You're going to sweep. You're going to lose all your creatures. You're going to kick yourself because you could have done demolition field. And uh, now you lost because you didn't. Wandering Emperor doesn't matter. The best they can possibly do is flash it in, wait until it comes around to their turn, and then tap out for their turn just to pay the ward for. Oh, <laughs> there you go. That's what it's all about. That's why you use four copies of such a lovely, lovely creature. Perfect. Five lands, seven, and there's basically nothing most opponents can do with that yeah that's where you want to be of course sometimes demolition field and field of ruin in mono black waste not azorius control all of that it's rough but that is a pretty common scenario i wish i could make it happen more often there is ways to do that but maybe that would be a little bit glass cannon focusing on getting multiple Tyrannix Rexes 
it does the trick. It packs a punch. That's for sure. That's a pretty good backup plan. You got to admit, I couldn't make eight for Galta. But if I'm tapping five lands to make seven for T-Rexes, yeah, that's a good plan B. It's kind of like a plan A. Galta is a, a plan S above the alphabet or plan, plan alpha. Yeah, something like that. All right, I think I'll leave it there for tonight. Started a little bit later again, hopefully aiming to start tomorrow sooner. 8.30, 9 o'clock. Going to try to maybe do two hours, two and a half. It's going to be a stunner. I'm excited to face some of the new cards in Explorer. Maybe it will take people time to adopt them, but uh, hey, Volborn Tyrant, oh, the best addition to dinosaurs since Tyrannix Rex, I think. There you go. Another dinosaur that costs seven. I don't have trouble paying seven, so Vaultborn Tyrant, the perfect, the absolutely perfect addition. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching right now, later on, whenever it is. Have a good Monday or a Tuesday or a good drive to work, or a drive home from work. Have a good rest of your time zone. Get some good rest, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.